Welcome to the Vickers q and I'm Coach Steve, here to answer all your bodybuilding related questions. Today's question is from the coach, or sorry, the real cousin Vinny. Eximistane versus Arimidex. And you should have asked for Eximistane versus Anastrozole or Aromacin versus Arimidex. Either way. I know you said Arimidex is worse on limits, but how much worse? <laughs> Uh, how about a low dose of uh, Arimidex 0.125 milligrams? So that's one sixth. Is that one sixth? No, one eighth of a tablet. How about an eighth of a tablet of Arimidex? Any benefits to using uh, Eximustane besides um, Arimidex or Letrozole for better lipids? All right, so you got to remember that Arimidex and Letrozole, yeah, they're non steroidal aromatized inhibitors. When you look at the chemical formula of uh, aromacin, it basically looks like testosterone with a little thing attached, rendering it biologically inactive. And then what happens is aromacin or eximustane gets into the aromatized in, uh, enzyme, gets stuck. That's why it's called a suicide aromatized inhibitor. Yeah, it gets stuck and now the aromatized enzyme has to be metabolized out because it doesn't work anymore. So aromacin lowers your aromatized enzymes, their total aromatized enzymes, whereas Arimidex or Letrozole simply blocks them for a certain amount of time, similar to how Provirin blocks, um, you know, the aromatized enzyme. So that's why you see one milligram of Arimidex, the tablet of one milligram of Arimidex is about as strong as 25 milligrams of Aromacin. Yeah? That's the dose of one tablet. So if you run both at one milligram of aromacin, uh, 25 milligrams of aromacin compared to one milligram of arimidex, you're probably going to see similar reductions in uh, estrogen levels. But for whatever reason, besides you know, estrogen being cardiovascular uh, system protective by increasing HDL levels, Arimidex has another pathway, which I'm not really sure about, which further lowers HDL levels and increases LDL levels, which you would not expect because Arimidex is not a steroid and Aromacin technically is, but it has non-steroidal effects. So even though the, the dosage of Arimidex is lower, one, a 25th of the dose compared to uh, Aromacin, the effects on lipids are going to be worse, but the reduction of estrogen is going to be about the same. Yeah? Now, you don't want to take one milligram of Remedex per day unless you're running really, really high dosages of testosterone. Yeah? So let's say your dosage of testosterone is moderate. The less amount of Remedex you take, given your estrogen is in, in range or at the top of the ratio range, the, the less amount of Remedex you take, like the dosage you asked for, an eighth of a milligram, so that's an eighth of a tablet, so cut into fours and cut those into halves again. If you take two of those and you keep your estrogen in, 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 in a good range, I don't see it's going to be that, much, that detrimental to your HDL and, and lipid levels. But if you start taking one milligram of aromidex every day, or, or 2.5 milligrams of uh, uh, letrozole, yeah, your lipids are going to crash you're better off taking aromacin in that case, you know, at one tablet per day of 25 milligrams. So, since aromacin just lowers the aromatized enzyme, which prevents additional um, conversion of testosterone to estrogen, but doesn't potentiate any effects on further reductions of HDL. So now that you know that, why would you use aromidex? The only the scenario where you want to use Remedex is on a cruise and at higher dosages you want to use Aromacin. Yeah? Because they know that Aromidex is generally speaking a lot cheaper compared to Aromacin. Yeah? On, on, let's say you get uh, 50 tablets of 25 or 30 tablets of 25 milligrams compared to 30 tablets of 1 milligram of Aromidex. Aromacin is going to be more expensive. Sometimes it's 25%, sometimes it's 200% more expensive. So Consider, you can consider running a Remedex during a cruise when the, the requirement for aromatized inhibitor is so much lower. You might be able to get away with nothing, or you might be able to get away with two quarter 
or eight tablets, so that's 0 0.125 milligrams of Arimidex per week. And that's, you're going to see minimal reductions of uh, serum uh, lipid levels. But if you go higher in your testosterone dose or aromatizable compounds, then you need to use aromacin to keep that in check. And then you're going to see less negative effect on your um, serum lipid levels compared to using Arimidex to control estrogen conversion. Yeah. So I hope that sends you in the right direction on, on uh, how to proceed. And again, if, you're, if your dosages are moderate, you might be able to get away with methane and calcium deglucurate, which both help to metabolize estrogen and phytoestrogen out of the body. And when you're using like 150 to 200, 250 milligrams of testosterone per week, those are probably enough to, um, you know, keep your estrogen in range. I mean, that's what I'm using right now. I'm using 250 tests, 25 milligrams of DHA per day, 10 milligrams of pregnenolone, 200 milligrams of methane, and five, no, I'm sorry, 1,000 milligrams of calcium deglucurate to keep my estrogen in range. And I don't have so much water retention, don't have any... I'm seeing amounts of acne, my libido is fine. I haven't checked my estrogen rate, uh, yet, but I, I doubt it's over 55 picograms per milliliter. And that's, you know, for 250 tests plus another what, 200 milligrams of DHA and pregnenolone per week. It's a significant amount of hormones, not requiring aromatized inhibitor because I'm reusing calcium, or yeah, calcium deglucurate and methane. So, hope that sends you in the right direction on, uh, you know, when to apply each aromatized inhibitor uh, and which circumstance, yeah. Um, I would prefer aromacin over Remedix at higher dosages, but uh, of PEDs, but at uh, hormone replacement like dosages, you should be able to get away with Remedix without uh, seeing too many changes in your uh, serum lipid levels. And I hope that helps, yeah, hope that answers your question. If anybody else has a question, you can ask me in the private Facebook group. Details how to join are below in the description field. Yeah, or you can wait until the next Vickers Q&A, which I post at the end of the month. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.